much cash. Watch how I came up fast. Hey guys, how's it going? Harrison Brother here, just doing a video on Q's Sugar Weasel. So to start off, let's make sure the weapon is clear. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the law tactical is shut. And as we pull that back, we are clear. Nothing in the mag well. We are all good to go. So, wow. I mean, you look at this and this is pretty. To me it is. A lot of people don't like the, the different frame, uh, receiver, uh, the optic, the way I've got it. It's kind of, it's a rainbow. 50 shades of black, gray, and clear anodizing. This, this looks good to me. I'm going to be... 100% honest with you, this is more my style. And the reason is, it's built to last. The only thing that I've noticed about this clear anodizing is it does wear pretty well. As you can see the bottom of my magwell, uh, just doing some reloading drills so far, and it's got it's got a little wear on it, not bad. I mean, I, I literally got this a few days ago, so I can only tell what this will go through once I start putting rounds in it. By no note, this is not a video of uh, rounds through it yet. I will post that shortly once I get to the range. This is just a first impression review on the Sugar Weasel. Um, so a lot of times people will ask, why should I buy this? Why should I buy that? Is that better? Uh, and to compare it to, well, we'll start off with the Honey Badger, which is Q's other 300 blackout, seven inch, uh, pistol or rifle, whatever configuration that you buy. Um, the reason for me that I got this is because of being able to put this law tackle folder on there. And to me, size is a big deal. We have this right here without the law tactical. This comes in at 22.5 inches in length when this is all the way closed and extended, it's at 25 inches. Now, if we put a tape measure here, let's go ahead and run this. We are at, looks like 23 and a quarter inches. Fully adjusted, we are out to 26 and a half roughly. So, that doesn't matter though, here's why. Boom, cut it in half. Essentially, now we're showing around 17 and a half inches. Oh, not even, let's see. Let's see this the right way, 17 inches, okay, yeah. Way better there, way better there. I mean, 17 inches, that can fit in anything. In fact, right here, I got my Vertex commuter sling and it fits perfectly in this top, top bag. Very small, I mean, the camera's making it look big because of the way I've set up, but um, very small bag, can fit in almost anywhere, and that is why I wanted this. The Honey Badger comes in at 20 inches, totally closed, uh, with, without this, obviously, and it also extends to 25 inches, so that is the pistol variant, at least. And I'm definitely glad I stayed on the pistol route in here, Here's why I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth on topics, but I just want to talk about why I got this. So bear with me. A pistol variant of an AR is way better than an SPR. And I'll give you a few reasons why. Back in the old days before they made these awesome braces, they could be a pain. I understand that. But now that the ATF has allowed you to shoulder these and I mean, look at the comfort on the behind of this. Also, we got Q's little logo on the back, but that's plenty of room to shoulder. And even if you can't, I mean, as long as you're not doing it in front of guys, you'll be fine. Um, am I in no way telling you to do that? But <laughs> anyways, so what's great about this is if you're in a state where you can't have a loaded rifle in the truck, this is not a rifle. No matter what people tell you, this is a pistol because the ATF labeled uh, these braces and these lowers as pistols you can uh, go anywhere where you're allowed to have a pistol with you. Um, another thing, if you're a hunter and rifle season is closed, but you can use pistols, you take this little bad boy out with you, perfect, perfect for hunting. 300 blackout is very optimal. Uh, you know, out to 500 yards, I've seen people 
good shots. And I mean, that's that's pushing this caliber. I mean, that's the best ballistics possible of supersonics. But most people, I would say most people are in the 200 yards in. I mean, this is usually a, course, a close quarters, excuse me, uh, rifle. So for me, that's what I got this for. That's why I have a red dot on there. That is the Romeo 5. That is a... $200 optic, not the best optic, but I've seen a lot of good reviews on it and I'm just gonna give it a try. I have other um, systems of optics that I could use, but I'm gonna give this one a shot and see how this goes for now. Disregarding that, let's get back to this. So being able to fold it, that was huge for me. Being able to throw it into a bag and not even know it's there is what I was going for. At 4.7, four pounds, seven ounces, it is the lightest rifle by Q in terms of the AR style. It's lighter than the Honey Badger in both pistol and rifle configurations, and that's huge. It is only one ounce lighter than the Honey Badgers, but still, any weight you can get, you gotta take it. Okay, as we look at this system, you can see that we got a regular mil spec single stage trigger here, nothing special. So we take a look here. Pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's that's not bad for a for a standard AR trigger. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. And one of the great things about running this is I can throw the gold AR two-stage trigger from the honey badger in there. I can get the radiant arms charging handle. Essentially, I can make this my own honey badger if I want to down the road, and that's why spending the extra $800 was not worth it to me. Being able to buy an optic, being able to buy the Law Tactical Folder, which comes in at 250, you know, 200 there, uh, and then ammo, and throwing on a can, it just made more sense to me. So if you're looking to save money, I think this is the route for you to go. I mean, as a college kid, for me, drop in, uh, Twenty three hundred, twenty four hundred on a honey badger versus sixteen hundred. That's that's quite a bit of money. Even though sixteen hundred is a lot of money too, you got to think of it as this is an investment. This is a rifle that's going to last me my whole life. You know, down the road, you know, I'm maybe changing out gas blocks or uh, barrels or you know things that can be replaced. But this as a whole is going to be rock solid for decades to come, and that's what's great. As well as their silencers by Q, I just ordered a Thunder Chicken, so as soon as that gets out of ATF Joe, this is gonna be one killer combo right here, so I'm excited for that. But uh, let's look at the Cherry Bomb, which is their muzzle brake device here. One of the great things about this is it's very light and compact. The titanium look on it is kinda crazy. I kinda like that. Um, as you can see right here, these things are called tapers. See where it sticks out just a little bit right there? What that does is it allows the suppressor to perfectly fit over it without uh, kinking or scraping, allowing it to, if you're not threaded all the way or it comes loose, you're not gonna get a baffle strike. And that's what's great. That's why the science and ingenuity behind these is amazing. And Q is really doing that. Uh, this barrel is a one in seven excuse me, seven inch, one in five twist, uh, which people are not used to. People are used to the one in seven and the one in eight out there. And Q's logic behind the one in five is that it's the best barrel for subs and supers, suppressed and unsuppressed. It's the ultimate do it all tight groups. Uh, that's what you want. And it's able to keep those light supers tight and those heavy supers tight and that's what they were going for so if you're going to get a one in five barrel you're definitely going to probably pay a little more and that's because it has to be quality because when the bullets are moving at that fast of a twist rate sometimes uh in smaller barrels or even more problems with the bigger barrels is that they tend to uh dissolve or to just explode and that's because they're moving at such a fast rate. So Q got their science really well developed here in this seven inch barrel. And I think that that really made a big difference for me because I, accuracy is important. Okay, so let's move on to what this frame and uh, handguard is made out of. Right here 
on this frame itself, we got 70, 75 aluminum. And right here, we got 60, 61 aluminum. Q calls this the 50 shades of gray or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's just so, it's so amazing. Obviously this is not gray, but this is, this is what the component is made out of and whatever the material is made out of, they clear anodize it so that it, it stays as strong as it can. I think it's twice as strong as black anodizing and Q didn't want to mess with that. They built the rifle to be well used and hard use and that, that's what this system is essentially now. That's why you see the colors the way they are. Uh, let's see, another thing to talk about here is, this is a six inch rail. Um, comes with an adjustable gas block here, which you can see right there. Just go ahead and adjust that if needed. Um, it is already made to run suppressed and unsuppressed pretty well. Um, if you're over gassed, obviously, you just tune that or under gas. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm not worried about it running uh, Unsuppressed. Once I get suppressor, we'll have to probably see what happens there. But in terms of the way it runs, it's going to run just like any other honey badger. And those honey badgers have always run well. Now, obviously, not every rifle is made the same, so there may be some issues. But nothing a, a shooter can adjust on the way out. Okay, so we've talked about the weight. We've talked about the length. Um, yeah, so this is basically... The perfect rifle pistol excuse me pistol for me um, like I said everybody has their reasons you know I thought about building my own you know but when you get into a system like this when you get into small barrels you get into adjustable gas blocks everything matters um, even even the frame the excuse me the lower is important and people will say well you can buy a, a PSA lower and have no problems <sighs> People, people don't understand that. There's a lot of errors that can occur just by the lower. And internally, the parts, if you don't have a uh, frame that's tight and you know there's a lot of wiggle, you're gonna get issues right there that you may think are something related to the barrel or even the ammo. So it's important that you know your rifle and the money that you put into it is really well spent. I always say spending money is the more money is the more quality like i said i've i've seen psa rifles go well they're they're very cheap but you're risking that it becomes more of a project than a elite weapon system at that point that's just my honest opinion um especially because i'm i'm buying this to last for a very long time i'm gonna put it through its hard uses for sure but this will be a rifle that last for many many years and that's why dropping the sixteen hundred dollars or the fifteen ninety nine was was doable for me because I knew it was an investment. Um, that is the basic overview of the Sugar Weasel by Q. Um, I'll go ahead and put out a review on the uh, shooting it in yardages and groups and whatnot once I uh, get get to the range and to get time. But other than that, this is the. Sugar Weasel by Q. Thanks for stopping by.